person in the family and that person was the one who told him that whenever you are being scolded by your mother, she doesn't really like you. So now, trying to get to know that what you are doing is wrong, not because I don't like you, but it is actually wrong, but you're not getting anywhere. So I had to show you pictures of how I bore him, pregnancy, so number one um i'm not sure i can answer all those questions but those those are <laughs> because i'm still not a very experienced father myself but i just wanted to two points y'all that maybe help one is sometimes the ex when you go excessiveness in something is a form of rebellion right and kids when they reach a certain age they want to assert their independence if they see that mother is controlling my timetable from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m., they realize, where's my independence? Where's my choices? So you want to get in a way, almost inspire them, what, what would you like to do? Give them a permission to make choices, decisions, and if, even if you don't like it, you might not like the decisions. You might say, it's not how I do it. It's not how I want you to do it. But let them show that they have room to assert, even the clothes they wear, right? I presume you tell them what to wear, right? Okay. <laughs> so... That's exactly the story. So you want to give them a bit of choice. They might, they might wear something that is, you might think is, hey, it's, it's not appropriate. Okay? That's your choice, okay? your decision. You build them the ability to make decisions on their own so they realize that, because especially boys, boys want to, they want to assert themselves. Like, hey, I'm the man, right? They want to do their own thing. So have that way where you give them some, uh, release, release some control so that they make decisions. And then let the consequences come. So for example, say, hey, this is your decision and they failed school, okay? Say, was it, imagine if they followed your timetable and they failed school. Mom, you see, it was you, because of you I failed my school. So you made me do this. But say, hey, here's, you decide. You say how, how you're gonna study. I won't tell you. You're now old enough. You've passed this age, I'm not, I'm not your, you know, I'm your mother, but it's up to you. And they fail, say, ah, well, so tomorrow I'll make you work in a supermarket, right? Right, tomorrow you'll be picking up the garbage. I, I'm not, not my responsibility anymore. You, you, have, you know what's right, what's wrong. You've taught them, taught them when they were young, now give them some ability to, um, to make those decisions. And I think that, that which will help them feel that assertiveness. Secondly, the, the natural, this is a, a, a lifelong story of you know, sons and their mothers, right? Sons and the mothers always have this issue where the son is never grateful enough to the mother, right? It's like, oh, you don't call me enough, you don't text me enough, and until he's like 55 years old, <laughs> he will face this issue. <laughs> so I've, I've known you good news for you on that one. But you just, again, it's more like where they, you spend quality time without telling them that, oh, look, I spend quality time with you. I'm having fun with you now. Make sure you, when I'm old, you spend time with me. No, you just spend those good times with them. You make the most of it so that at least have good memories. Even if they want, if they, they forget, even if they get distracted by the new beautiful wife, you know, later on, they still remember mom, oh, I, I come back and, and say, have respect. So I think, inshallah, those two, again, I, I don't, I'm not sure this is the best advice, but inshallah, this will, will help. Please permit me to use this word. I believe all the problem we are having concerning our children nowadays is we created, it's parents created that. Because most parents, they fail in you know, our um, duties, responsibilities to our children. Imagine when we have a younger kid going up and down, for us to calm the, the, the child down, is put on the television, watch that time. So that gives us freedom to do whatever we want to do. Then again, we don't spend much time with our children. Why? It's because of the economy here in Nigeria. We have both the parents have to work. No, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that the best profession for women is teaching, tailoring, and nursing. Yes, nursing. Nursing is whereby you have duty, money, duty after you and night even you will not be with your husband maybe for a few days. So tell me where we are where the time is for our children. Again teaching, yes, the salary is poor. I'm, I teach, I'm a teacher. I need to open a shop to keep the family going because of the pay. Then tailoring. Yes, the tailoring is for us to just for the family alone, you know, but I want to make pay out of it. So I have to consult people. I'm sorry. 
this business side of commerce. So, so by the time I cut now, the next day I start sewing. Uh, but before I finish that, I'm looking for customers. Okay, so where is the time? Okay. Then the another thing is we overprotect our children. We don't allow them to grow on their own. I'm guilty of that too. I can't allow my child to leave the even within the flat to go outside to play. Because I know that by the time they come back, they must have injured themselves. And which will cause another problem for me. Just recently, three days ago, because of 200 naira ice cream, my child of 11 years sold uh, this tap for 200 naira ice cream. Because he believes that everybody, anybody that is around him, their family has silver bed gallery that are not good to them to. So they are not really grown. We don't give them, we overprotect them. We follow them here and there. Go by public transport, go to school, we don't do that. We we'll drop them and pick them or they go by staff uh, school bus. Then again, we, uh, sorry, I have a lot of things to do. We don't, I teach, I correct other children. But I, as I am, as I'm still looking for people to correct my child for me. That is another thing. Um, so a few points here. One is about outsourcing our parenting, right? Like I said, we outsource parenting TV, we outsource parenting to uh, the, the kids, to the school. I'll give you, again, I gave you, so, I gave you one practical advice was to have the one-to-one -one session with each child. That's one practical advice you can do. Regardless of how busy you are, you'll find even one hour to spend with each child one-to-one -one and just have the conversation. That's the first advice. The second advice, there should be a time in the day which is sacred, that everyone is on the dinner table together. There's uh, been studies that show that, you know, the number of dinner times parents and children, parent, child, and all kids, sit on TV, sit on, sorry, no TV, sit on the dinner, no TV, no internet, phones away, and just have a talk. How was your day? How was your day? What did you do? How was your day? Have that special time. So that's, those are two times that I recommend. Number one, one to one. Number two, have a set time every day that the whole family sits together, as much as possible. Of course, you might be busy and stuff, but make it like important. Very, very important. But this is the second time. The third is, of course, weekends. See, so again, plan your weekends. If your weekend is spent sleeping, right, or you're not spending time, you know, weekend with a, a productive way to spend time together, that time will be wasted as well. So think about how to plan your weekends to so you spend quality time. So time is there if we make it a priority. Someone, someone, someone says to me, Hamad, uh, I'm too busy. I'm like, no, that's, you're not too busy. You just did not make that a priority. Because we are not busy doing things we want to do. But if we are, not, if we are busy, if, I mean, seriously, if you think about it, even no matter how hard the situation is, how we manage, inshallah, the two-day workshop, which we'll do over the next two days, will help you manage your time and think ways to manage your time. But the key point here is really think about how am I supposed to um, build my time, how to, to build in my life the time to dedicate to your child, whether it's one-to-one -one and dinner time, and some time we can. Even these are three basic minimum time because spend quality time with the children where you're not just, re again, like the sister said, reacting and just giving or correcting, but having a conversation, discussing and seeing where things go. The second point about overprotectiveness. This is actually a, a worldwide pandemic, right? There was a time when the whole village used to raise the children, right? Because why? Because now you, you know exactly who's in the village. Everyone knew who, everyone, you knew all the neighbors, you knew all the people, friends, and everyone knew who your child was. So, but now we live in urban cities where it's scary, where there are issues, where there have been cases. Also, there's over-sensationalization, uh, over uh, that's a word, of the media, okay? Where now, every time the media, oh, someone got hurt, someone did this, some child got molested, some child got, So we see this like, oh, okay, we get, we get moving more protective, right? So we need to think about what is that impact? Because if, imagine, maybe I'm sure you're, all of you, when you were young, you could go to school public transport, come back normally. My parents talk about that now. It's like, you know, we become more and more protective and less and less trusting of other people. And it is having impact on our children. It is having impact on our children. But we need to start thinking about where can they safely grow and safely make mistakes. Schools, madrasa, you know, uh, places where they can safe. And unfortunately, now even the media is trying to attack even the madrasas and schools. Oh, this teacher did this and that teacher. So it's building that trust. So you need to you yourself vet, it's okay, these people, inshallah, are reasonable, teach them what's right, what's wrong, and say that if this happens, you do this, if this happens, you do that, and let them make mistakes, 
they'll learn from the mistake. Maybe someday they got hurt a bit. There is, um, I wish I had, there's a checklist called uh, the GRIT checklist. And this checklist by, done by uh, two professors from the UCLA in, in California where they said, these are things parents should let their children do so that they can grow. For example, when your child is young and starts to walk, when he falls down, what do you do? Don't pick him up, <laughs> right? You let him get up on his, he'll cry, eh, and then he'll get up and he'll try again and fall again. But you wins, he hurts you like, I, you know, but then let him get up again. Same thing in life. They will go, they'll do something and they'll fall, they make a mistake, they'll fail. Oh, so what did you learn from that? Mistakes on the issue is what if they learn from that mistake. And, if you, and that learning is not like you are bad, you are stupid, you didn't do this. It's more like, okay, what happened that led for you to fail? For example, I'll give you a personal story. There's one point I was, um, I was doing well in school. Then one year, I did really bad. <laughs> like, really, really bad. And alhamdulillah, my parents, my dad went ballistic. <laughs> my, dad, my parents were like, in the end, just like, what happened? What, what's wrong? What happened? Then we kind of spoke together and realized, actually, I was spending more time with friends who were like not studying and stuff. And they were like, okay, what will you do differently? So I said, um, okay, I'll sit in the different part of the classroom. So I actually, next day, I went and I sat in the part of the classroom. My friends are like, oh, why are you doing this? Like, oh, my, my parents told me this. And my grades went up again. So then I realized, again, I learned from a mistake. It was a consequence. The way my parents told me, okay, what happened? And then they gave me, what will you do differently? Because sometimes, okay, what happened? Oh, my friends. Okay, tell you not to go to your friends. But no, what will you do differently? Where will you hang out? Who will you be? Then the real, and then seeing results, okay, my grades went up again. So I now I, I learned from my mistake. So I knew that people around me influence how I live my life. So these sort of things you kind of build as you go along. And inshallah, I wish I had a checklist there because it's, it's a really interesting checklist about things you can, you need to let your kids go through. Like, you know, for example, there's, it's funny now, in the US, there's a, the, once there was a, two children, kindergarten, pre-kindergarten, three years old or four years old. And one child came and took a plastic hammer hit the kid, right? The other kid will start crying. So then the next day, the parents come. Oh, you have bullying in the classroom. What bullying? What happened? Because, you know, one child hit the other child. This is normal. Kids are, you know, they hurt each other, then they say sorry, and then they grow, and then they learn. That's normal. If you even protect your child, even that environment, when will they learn that I need to, you know, grow up and say, so I go to the complaint and make a statement? So these are some small things that, you know, really we need to start building. I know it's easier said than done, and I'm sure we have a lot to go through. Assalamu alaikum. Um, please, I want to know, can we actually raise children without spanking? And if we must spank, at what point do we spank our children? Um, when we talk about the patients especially, um, because she was talking about raising your kids and letting them do other things. I'm also a teacher, and I've been researching about the Montessori system. And I realized that the Montessori, basically, the children do whatever. And I was talking to my friends about it and I said, we don't even have the patience to do Montessori. With your kids, you just want to put on their shoes. You want them to get dressed. You just want to be out of the house. You can't. So when you actually go through that list for yourself, your patient, you're letting your child put on his shoes, tie his shoes, spend the whole day doing that instead of just snatching it off their hand and doing it and just moving on. I mean, even in the way you raise your child, you're teaching them that patience that you want them to learn. So um, I think it also goes back to us, the way you raise your child, you have to be basically step back and let them do something. It's much easier. It saves a lot of time to just do it and move out the door. But then, and then um, also, I know that, for instance, with music, it's a lot of things are convenient. With the technology, a lot of things. You put your child in front of the TV, you can go to the kitchen and do other things. It, for you to actually be able to do these things, you have to put in time. And the technology makes it easy for you to just push your child away. And with music especially, I mean, you, I went to a kid's party and they had music and I mean, <laughs> had a mini heart attack because you see kids and they're praised for dancing in very funny ways and everything. But if you take out the music, you have to get activities to engage them and nobody wants to engage the child. You'd rather just push them. Even with parents in schools, we complain all the time that yes, um, you know, my child is going wrong. You call parents into school and they tell you, how come you're not doing this? Your child cannot be in school 247. You have to take responsibility for your child. So I think that um, it's, you're trying to raise your child, but you also have to think about being responsible for the child. To do those things, you have to be part of your child's growing. You also have to, I think that's why I think these are really important because not just for the children, but for you as well. The things that you're trying to teach your children, have you taught it? Have you, have, have you 
internalized it, does it also make sense to you? Because if it doesn't make sense to you, you can't teach something that you don't have. You can't give something that does it, you don't understand yourself. So, okay. All right, so um, back to the few points. Yep, the spanking, first one is about the spanking children. Again, we have the guidance from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? There's few things. Now, of course, we need to make sure we care how we interpret the hadith. First was that, you know, teach your children how to pray when they're seven and beat them for it when they're, when they're ten. Okay, I'll come back to this hadith. Secondly, he said, never hit the face. That was one of his, do not hit the face, because that's where the dignity of the, of the human being is. So you never hit the face. That's the second thing. Thirdly, it's like, if you notice that one guy said the first seven years of your child's life, you teach them how to, you know, you, you, you show them love. The next seven years, you teach them the le lessons and they become almost like you waste, you, you kind of give all the lessons. And the last seven years, because after they become independent, the last seven years, you become their friends. So when it comes to hitting, sometimes when we hit, we hit with anger. This is the confused thing. We confuse anger and hitting. You know, we take out the stress of work. We take out the stress of, you know, being, maybe uh, being upset. And we really just like, you know, it's like a punching match, right? Because let's say, let's say you had a bad day at work, or a bad day at work, come back home, and you just like take it out on the child when they fail in the school. Secondly, be careful what you hit for. Why are you hitting? Because if you're hitting them, uh, if you don't hit them for missing salah, but you hit them for failing at school, they realize what's priority. I don't, I don't need to study. Uh, sorry, I, need, I don't need to pray, I need to study. So make sure you're very careful. Thirdly, the hitting should not be to a point of injury, of course, and to break someone's life, but also to make them realize that you are upset. You are upset. Like, I'm, I'm hitting you because you're upset. And not in a way, not, not in a way to, you know, to um, create physical income jam, but actually to make that I am upset with you. And I'm, I'm willing to express my upset by, 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 by hitting you. And then even if it doesn't hurt them, that's not the point. For them, just seeing their mother or father being upset, and especially again, back to the fathers, because mothers sometimes, they, you know, they get emotional, they come and get hit. But when the father hits, you know, oh boy, things are really bad, right? So they realize, okay, so that's why, you, especially with fathers, be very careful when to hit. I remember my dad hit me twice in my life, okay? But both lessons are like embedded in my, in my mind. Because they just saw, I won't tell you why. So, so both lessons are very embedded in my life because I know that these were important moments. But my mom, like, yeah, my mom hits all the time, right? So you need to still think about, use that hitting, you know, almost strategically. Like, okay, what will I hit him for? What will I not hit him for? So I think hopefully that will answer the question there. Um, the, the patience to uh, learn from mistakes and, and to let them tie their shoes, right? The example, that's a good example. It might take time the first time and the second time, and the third time, and the 55th, sixth time, right? But eventually, they'll learn, right? So you gotta be patient those first few times when it's very, very like, you know, you just feel like losing it, and you say, you know what? First time that you mistake, second time, third time, they will get better. And you just wanna say, you need to, sometimes there's a check where you gotta like, <sighs> okay, breathe, breathe, say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, akbar, you know? Make go pray, come back, finish, you know? <laughs> and so hopefully they will like, you know, over time, they're like, okay, then they'll get the hand. But if you just, again, if you just intervene every single time, quickly intervene, then you won't learn, right? And you know, for example, like me, when I, all my, all my life, you know, my mom prepared sandwiches for me to go to school. When I went to abroad and started studying on my own, I was like, I don't know how to cook, right? So I was like, and I remember, I remember one day I wanted to cook chicken. So I put some chicken up and I just put it in the frying pan. No sauce, no pepper, no salt, no onion, nothing, right? And then like, this tastes bad. Why does it taste bad? <laughs> my parents are like, what did you do? Like, so then, it's just some basic skills we don't allow the kids. Maybe at a certain age, you start thinking, maybe by now, by 10, they should make their own lunch box, for example. They choose, again, back to the idea, they choose. They choose what to put in the lunch box. So there's the ways to build those. Even they might mess it up. It might be so messy in the morning when you see the kitchen. But at least you let them build that uh, resilience. Uh, finally, there's a good point. It's just about, you know, she mentioned something else when she said, you know, I didn't know how to do this earlier, like saying sorry. And as parents, sometimes it's hard. Saying sorry to your child is very hard. But we need to learn to say sorry. Like, you know, I, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. So they realize, oh, human too, right? And they realize, okay, we can now have a discussion about it. So if they, th if they think that you are, you, if you don't admit that you made a mistake, if you don't admit that, you are, that you're sorry, then they rebel. It's like, no, I saw you do this. You are unjust, you're lying. You just saw you, you said to me, but I know you did this. Because yes, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. And make sure you quickly, after making a mistake, so you don't make it obvious, because they remembered five months, like, Mom, remember that day you said this? <laughs> they remember you. <laughs> they remember, they don't forget. 
So saying sorry as quickly as something, you know what? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have lost my temper. There's one, um, you know, friend of mine he used, when he used to drive, someone used to cut him off in driving. The guy started, you say, you always say, uh, you know, Allah hadi, may Allah guide you, right? So one day he got angry, he said something bad. His son reminded Dad, didn't you say we should say Allah hadi, right? <laughs> so it's like, oh, yes, Allah <laughs> hadi. So remembering this, saying those uh, mistakes. So I, I think, and finally, this, this action point is very important. I think from this whole conversation, this is very interesting. I mean, I wish I could just spend more time with this. Um, this idea of a parenting group, a networking group, could be meeting once a month, discussing the challenges, um, maybe reading a book on parenting and discussing the lessons, how it applies to our life. It is important to have a discussion. Don't think that you're suffering on your own. Like we heard, most of you said, yes, yes, whenever someone said, yep, yep, I remember this. You know, you all feel the same issues. It's very, very... And again, this is Muslim and non-Muslim. I mean, across the board, people are facing this issue. But what you need to do is think about what can we do to raise our children as productive youth who, inshallah ta'ala, would lead in the end, follow the advices of Uthman, alayhi salam, and lead us, inshallah, make dua for us after we die. I think uh, we want to close there, inshallah, and I'll leave the floor to, to you to share the shalom. For a beautiful way you have captured the lessons we just burst through in the Quran. And you know, you really brought it home to us, and we have seen that, or I personally have seen that, or confirming once again that there's really nothing in our life that the solution is not there in the Quran. Now it goes back to us how is our relationship with the Quran? Is it Friday to Friday? Okay, I read my calf. What is even the meaning of the calf for reading? You know, we need to start relating to the, with the Quran in the language we understand so that the message can have an impact in our life. And we need to do this not only on our own, but even with our children. Even if it's after Subhi, five, ten minutes discussion, it doesn't have to be anything lengthy. But the consistency in it, it will really help us. You know, it will be an opportunity for the children, a bonding period between us and the children. And one last thing I want to also say is that, um, you know, the um, situation Rahma painted about helping our children to tie their laces and stuff. You know, things are simple as that. When we don't do it right, that's when it becomes easy for our children to get carried by peer pressure in older years. Because they're not used to making decisions by themselves. They're used to taking orders. So they cannot, we confuse them. So you're saying at a point, don't take order. Meanwhile, at another point, we're dishing out orders. So we should learn to give them room to grow. Freedom within limits. Okay, you, between this and this, make a choice. So there's freedom, they can exercise their choice. And let's know that, you know, we can't expect a different result by doing things the same way. It's not just going to be possible. So each one of us here will actually be resolved to do things differently. We need to work first on that self-control. If you can't control your emotions and you keep thinking, when they are young, you can bully them. But it, an age will come when they will look back at you and it will be match for match. And you know, it gets to that point and that's when we start running from pillar to post, seeking for help. We shouldn't wait for that. If we have raised our children and they are above teenagers now, there's nothing wrong in calling them, having a kind of thing and say, okay, we may, I mean, we, we may, I may have done things in the past that hurt you, I'm really sorry. You're also teaching them to know that when they do things to others, they should not feel uh, um, too arrogant to apologize. If you apologize, I'm sorry, but I want us to start on a gimbling. Okay, can we lay down the rules that the rules in the house? Okay, what did I do that you don't like? And okay, so we'll also, I mean, things they can tell you, that's the job for it. Also tell them your own expectation. And then you can keep on reminding yourself the consistency. I know with the, with the work schedule, it's really crazy. It's not easy. But really, we have to make a decision. And that's where I keep saying our brothers come in. You know, we have to look for flexible work that will give us time to parent our children. That's just the basic truth. How we're going to do it, I may not have the answer. But it's something we need to look for. Am I going to do this work till I'm 60 years old? Or I'm going to, let me, okay, I know that, okay, the transition to a period so that this can happen. We need to plan our time. And I hope that we'll all be joining Abu Productive tomorrow and next tomorrow for this session because I know that by the end of the, those sessions, inshallah. <laughs>